All right, so yesterday we introduced the uh, ratio test and we did one example with the ratio test, but the one example we did was where the ratio test failed, where it uh, could not be used to analyze the harmonic series. So let's see better examples. Let's see the ratio test succeed. And I've said that one reason the ratio test is so valuable is that it plays nice with factorials. So let's see whether, whether one over n factorials converges or diverges. <clears throat> so the ratio test says to take the limit as n goes to infinity of an absolute value of a ratio, hence the name. Although, of course, the uh, limit comparison test is also looking at the limit of a ratio. So you just have to remember which is which. Um, in this particular case, the absolute values aren't doing anything because n factorial is always positive to begin with. So a sub n plus one takes n and replaces it with n plus one every time it shows up. I, I find the ratio test sort of fun is strong, but maybe a little relaxing. It's always sort of the same process. We always, for 99% of the time, wind up with a fraction of fractions. And we need to multiply top and bottom by the reciprocal of that denominator to get n factorial over n plus one factorial. And as we start to do examples with the ratio test, and as we start to look at examples involving factorials, it's going to be important to be able to simplify expressions like this. So n factorial, is n times n minus one times n minus two times n minus three. All the way down to one. <laughs> n minus, wait, plus one, that's right n plus 1 factorial is n plus 1 times n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 and so on all the way down to 1. <laughs> And you're going to see some sort of variation of this a lot as you go through the homework, where what you see here is that virtually everything cancels. The only thing that survives 
is this n plus one in the bottom? So we've got the limit as n goes to infinity of one over n plus one, which this is in the formal, but I hope sort of easy to read and comprehend that limit ends up being zero. Um, and again, you have to be a little careful, or careful is maybe a weird way of putting it. You have to keep these things straight. Um, the limit comparison test is also a limit of a ratio. And if you got zero, it at least could be a failure. Um, when you're doing the limit comparison test, you usually want a positive number. <clears throat> With the ratio test, getting zero is not a point of failure. The only point of failure for the ratio test is one. We have a finite number. It's less than one. One is the cutoff point, less than one converges, greater than one diverges. So this series diverges. <laughs> Like what? That is just very confidently saying completely the wrong thing. I don't I was thinking the right thing too. Don't know what my mouth was doing there. This series converges. Um and most of the examples of the ratio test are just going to be taking things that look kind of like this and throwing in complications. So another example, um, three to the power of two n plus one divided by n times, oh, it's only our second example. Let's, let's not go crazy. Let's just have an n factorial down here. So we're going to hit this with the ratio test. The ratio test works well for um, factorials and the ratio test works well for powers. And the ratio test works best when you don't have addition and subtraction. So, well, I guess you can say that 2n plus 1 is addition, but primarily I'm thinking of it as a power. And I therefore think that the ratio test should work well here. The limit as n goes to infinity of a sub n plus one over a sub n so when we use the ratio test the first thing we write down is always terrible um and we just have to to keep calm and not panic i mean just because we're basically always going to get a very ugly looking fraction of fractions. 
So three to the power of two times n plus one plus one divided by n plus one factorial over three to the power of two n plus one over n factorial. And now um, the second step is always the same. I mean, I shouldn't say always, but virtually always. We'll basically always wind up with this fraction of fractions. So the next step is going to be to multiply top and bottom by the denominator, by the reciprocal of the denominator. And what's, again, what's sort of the, the way the um, ratio test works. We're going to wind up with these products in the top and the products in the bottom. And what we're going to do is we're going to group them. That is to say, if you look at this fraction, you'll see these powers of three in the top and the bottom, and you'll see these factorials in the top and the bottom. And because, you know, multiplication is commutative, we can move stuff around. And as long as we have multiplication, we can break up fractions. <laughs> This is the limit as n goes to infinity of, <laughs> and at this point, I'm going to remark that everything is positive. Um, powers of three are positive. Um, factorials are positive. We've been dragging this absolute value along, but it isn't actually doing anything. <laughs> So we've got an n factorial in the top and an n plus one factorial down below. Um, we've got a three to that messy power on top. <laughs> Let's see, two n plus one plus one. And we've got three to the two n plus one down below. And now we'll deal with each of these fractions separately. And I wouldn't want to rush if, if anyone was uncertain about anything, but we did actually do this simplification just a few minutes ago. We found that it's one over n plus one. So this is not as bad as it looks, or maybe you don't think it looks bad, I don't know. 2n plus three up top, um, 2n 
then plus two and this plus one, this plus two and this plus one gives us plus three. Three to the two n plus one down below. When we have a base in common, we subtract the powers. So two n plus three minus two n plus one, uh, the two n minus the two n, and we get three to the fourth. So just some finite number. Um, what's 27 times? Should it be three to the second? Um, so we've got a three here, and then we've got minus negative one, right? Yeah, shouldn't that negative one be a positive yeah. one? Oh, you're right. Okay. Copying error, and you're correct. Thank you for catching that. We end up with three to the second or nine. <laughs> So we have the limit as n goes to infinity, one over n plus one times nine, which is nine over infinity, which is zero. Zero is less than one. So this series converges, which uh, this is sort of a side note, but gives you some idea of how remarkably um, quickly the factorial grows. Like a few weeks ago, um, we were messing around with the factorial on the calculator and we um, started getting overflow errors. Um, well, you know, exponential growth is incredibly fast. I mean, exponential growth is so fast that it's sort of a byword. People say that something's growing exponentially when what they mean is that something's growing really, really fast. But for this to converge, I mean, this fraction, needs to be going to zero. So for that to happen, that factorial in the denominator must be getting significantly bigger than the exponential in the numerator. So the numerator is going to infinity very quickly, but the denominator is going to infinity even faster. Um. Let's do an example with divergence. And I feel like, I mean, this is just my experience, but I feel like most of the time when the ratio test gives you divergence, what we're going to, the way that that divergence is going to show up is that the limit we take is going to be infinity. And I mean, properly speaking, a limit of infinity doesn't exist, but the ratio test works in the very natural way that infinity is greater than one. So the series diverges if we get infinity. Yeah. <laughs> So 
that sort of reverse the um, the situation we had in the last frame. <laughs> As a matter of fact, we don't need to use the ratio test here. Um, the series diverges using the nth term test. That is to say, the limit as n goes to infinity of n factorial over n to the 2n is, is not zero. It, it's actually infinity. Yeah. Um, the only issue with that is that, um, again, because factorials are probably new to most of us at this point in our careers, I don't know how obvious it is that this is not going to zero. And again, sort of the nice thing about the ratio test is that we can just use it. We can go in with no intuition, and as long as the limit we get isn't one, the ratio test will answer our questions. So let's see. I mean, I heavily implied or, or just outright stated that this is going to diverge, but Let's see if we can see that. A sub n plus one over a sub n. So a fraction of fractions. Um, this is a slight aside, um, but what you'll have noticed in like the homework and stuff is that, you know, in this stuff, we're basically always working with fractions. And that's, I mean, the only way that, that a limit could possibly exist is if the terms are going to zero. And the easiest and most common way for something to go to zero is for it to be a fraction whose denominator is getting bigger than the numerator. So um, lots of fractions in chapter 10. n plus 1 factorial over n plus 1 to n plus 1 divided by n factorial over n to the 2n. And again, when we sort of write down a sub n plus one over a sub n, it looks bad, but um, well, I want I might have space to. I don't want to crowd us, but. Uh, not writing the limit, just because I'm running out of space, we'll multiply top and bottom by the reciprocal of the denominator. We'll get n plus 1 factorial over n times 2n over n plus 1 times two to the n plus one um, times n factorial. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay, so, and then when you take the limit, we're going to always, or 
close enough to always be sort of grouping terms. Like you've got factorials in the top and the bottom. You've got ends in the top and the bottom. You've got those exponentials in the top and the bottom. So we'll get an n plus one factorial in the top. And an n factorial down there. We'll get an n in the top and an n plus one down here. And we'll get a two to the n in the top and a two to the n plus one down there. And uh, once again, I mean, I haven't forgotten the absolute values, but once again, everything here is positive. So let's take these one by one. So this is going to be the reverse of what happened in the last two cases. We're going to wind up with n plus one. This limit is one. You can show that using L'Hopital's rule as a, as a 10 second exercise, or if it takes me longer than 10 seconds, it's only because I can't write faster. You can get this very quickly using L'Hopital's rule. Then here, we subtract the powers and we get one half. So reading across, we're taking a limit as n goes to infinity, we get infinity plus one, which we'll think of as infinity, times one times one half. And hopefully, I mean, again, I'm being sloppy, but I think it's better to be sloppy and readable than, um, then precise and hard to understand. I hope our intuition is that one half of infinity is still infinity. You take all of the counting numbers, um, there are infinitely many of them. You take half of them, you take the even numbers, there are still infinitely many of them. So because this limit is greater than one, the original series diverged. Um, I know this can, this can get kind of tedious. That's, um, let's do an example where we can't just pretend the absolute values aren't there though. That seems to me to be probably what we're missing. And it's very rare, or I should say relatively rare, to have situations where we have like negative term, negative term, negative term, positive term, negative, I mean, 
what what's happening in the majority of cases is that terms are alternating between negative and positive. And the easiest way to make terms alternate mathematically is to put a negative one to the end in front of them. Then let's try, I don't want to get too cute and wind up with something that I struggle with, but that's Let's try a natural log for variety. And in the bottom, we will put the factorial. And I phrased this as, you know, well, here we can't ignore the, the um, absolute values, but when we have a term like this, um, we'll see that the absolute values behave very nicely. The absolute values are just going to cover this up for us and leave us with the rest of the series, um, like so. The limit as n goes to infinity of a to the n plus one over a to the n. The limit as n goes to infinity of ugh, um. So sort of by convention, this is normally put in front of the fraction, but we could move it into the top if we wanted to, move it into the numerator, and I'm just going to do that. Okay, and I see, I don't know. I, I feel like if I try to, to put it up, well, no, we don't have a lot of horizontal space. Maybe what I should be doing is I, should be moving down instead of sideways if what I need is horizontal space. Sorry, I know I'm right in the way of this, but so we multiply by the top or by the, um, the reciprocal of the denominator, I mean to say. So in the top, we're going to have that negative one to the n plus one, and that two to the n plus one, and that natural log of the n plus one. And then we're going to get the n factorial. And in the bottom, we're going to have the n plus one factorial. And then we're going to have the 
negative one to the n and the two to the n and the natural log to the n. And this is all very messy, but the first, I guess what I want to say now um, is that if you have a natural log and like a bunch of things are being multiplied and divided, that's, wait, the natural log, my mind is jelly today. If we just have that absolute value and everything's being multiplied and divided, that's just the same as having the absolute values of all of the terms. Um, so the absolute value works really well when you have products and multiplic and division. And it's not a coincidence. Um, something I said earlier that the ratio test works well when you have products, but doesn't work well when you have addition and subtraction is a direct result of that. Because if we just have everything being multiplied and divided, well, these terms are all positive, except for the negative one to the n plus one and the negative one to the n. So grouping our terms, this negative one to the n plus one is negative. And, or it, it can be. And this negative one to the n is negative. So we do need the absolute values there. But elsewhere, these absolute values aren't doing anything. So, Grouping our terms, we've got a two to the n plus one and a two to the n. Uh, we've got an n factorial and an n plus one factorial. We've got an ln of n plus one and an ln of n. And now let's see what happens. Um, we should not waste time with these terms. I mean, you can say, oh, we have the same base, so we should subtract the n plus one and we should subtract the n. Um, but what's actually happening is that the top is positive one. I mean, negative one to a power is either negative one or positive one, and the absolute value makes it positive one. Likewise, this denominator is positive one. So what we have in front is much less complicated than it looks like. It's just the world's worst way of writing positive one. So two to the n plus one over two to the n is two. n plus one minus n. n plus one n factorial over n plus one factorial is uh, something we've seen a few times today. It's one over n plus one. The limit as n goes to infinity 
the natural log of n plus one over the natural log of n turns out, a lot of times natural logs are messy and hard to work with, but here it's going to sort of emerge that we can use Lobatow's rule to find this limit very um in in relatively few steps and without doing anything terribly clever. So that's going to one. And as n goes to infinity, then this thing winds up being zero. Once you find out that there's a zero, like with the factorial, could you just, since it multiplies by everything, could you just save it? Um, so the only thing you need to be careful about is that if, if the limit has the form zero over zero or infinity over infinity, you need Lobatow's rule. Okay. So, um, I mean, you're, you're right to spot that pattern. The pattern you're seeing is the reason that most of the ratio test examples, you wind up with either infinity or zero, but you want to be a little cautious with it. Um, that's it for today. So tomorrow we'll do a few things. We'll, um, do the root test. We won't spend as much time on that. I need to, um, when I come up with examples in my head, we always just end up with the limits being zero or infinity. I'll bring you an example where we have a different limit, just, uh, just for variety.